have to be a good person to appreciate fine art. Which way? This is not good. Not good at all. Let's see. Up there is modern Europe. Down there to the left is Asia. But if you turn right, you end up in the Middle Ages. Where did you say we were supposed to meet again? My mother used to always drag me here when I was a kid. A gauche or a flat? The map. Why don't you look at the map already? Anyway, he says this is a great place for picking up chicks. So, where do you want to go for lunch? I think I can look at another painting. Which way? It doesn't look anything like it. Especially not with my clothes off. I want to see the impressionists. You want to see the expressionists? So, what can we do? This is supposed to be a world class museum! I've seen her sitting there every day, unmoving and unmovable, like some still point at the center of the universe, so calm and self-assured. I circle around her, once, sometimes twice, and I settle into place at a discreet distance, still in her orbit, but far enough away to escape. Every day for a week now, I've come back, and I've sat down on this bench, or higher up and on the second level, near the balustrade, where I can look down and see her face. She seems to absorb the light from the face of every person going by into her home, as if she is some narcissus, straining to see only herself, and I am the smitten echo due to the shadow of other people's voices, working at the side of the barn. And I feel the pull. I feel myself drawn closer to her, like a fragment of some star that has wandered for eons in the emptiness of space, pulled down and falling to the bottom of the ocean, rushing from one darkness to another, from one abyss to another just as quiet and just as deep. I know that I should stay away, but every day the pull grows stronger. My will weakens while other echoes, other people, other fragments of broken stars, following the arcs of their own orbits, move around us while we remain linked together. Not alone, but at a distance, all our own. We are rushing together through this darkness at the speed of light. Time becomes distorted, and the whole arc of our connection is fragmented into pieces of the possible future and the impossible past. Hi! Hello. Uh, you, you mind if I sit there? I think I've seen you here before. Oh, really? I think I've seen you too. Um, actually, I, um, I, I've been watching you uh, all week, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, no, no, not in a weird way or anything, you understand. It's, uh, it's, it's just, uh, I find you very interesting. Interesting? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I, I see you smile. Like that. I, I can't help but wonder, what is she thinking about? And then uh, sometimes I, I see you eat popcorn. I wasn't sure it was popcorn until Tuesday. Because after you left, I walked over and you left some kernels still sitting on the bench. So uh, I ate one, and um, it, just just the right amount of popcorn. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Why should I? I sometimes eat pigeons, too. <laughs> and then uh, uh, the other day, I think it was Wednesday, I saw it. Um, he almost got caught. The guard was just coming down the stairs. I could hear his boots clomping on the steps before he even turned the corner. I, he was getting closer and closer. He was close, wasn't he? I was, I was going to you know, go over and tell you, you know, warn you, but um, yeah, you saw him just in time. I, it, was, it was lucky. I, I was worried for you. You were? Yeah, I, I was worried that he was going to tell you to go someplace else and I would, I'd never see you again. 
It was a selfish fear, I suppose. Most fears are. Yes. I suppose they are. Yes, I suppose they are. Hey. What? You never used to do that before. Do what? You never used to ignore me like that. Looking right past me as if I didn't exist. I didn't realize I was doing it. But you were doing it. Honestly, I didn't you realize. You used to need only me. I still do. I couldn't live without you. You know that. I remember when you first met. You couldn't keep your eyes up off me. But now every girl that goes by. So that by and by. I'm surprised you don't need a chiropractor. For my neck. I'm surprised. You never used to, to do that. When we first met. A long time ago. When we first met. I haven't changed. You don't love me anymore. Love. It's you that's changed. Me. Yes, love. Love me. Still? Still. Very still. Still, if you, if you don't mind me asking. Yes? Uh, what are you doing? Oh, it's just a little game I play in my lunch hour to amuse myself. I guess what people do by how they're dressed. You, you can't really tell for sure just from what they're wearing. Yes, I can. See, that woman over there in the chair business suit with a collar up to her neck and a little bow tie? She's an executive from some company downtown. <coughs> Mary? No, too busy to date. Worn down from having to be twice as sharp and nasty as men to make it to the top. She could be here to be a boyfriend. I don't think so. She's probably meeting a business associate for a power lunch. Lots of couples come to the museum. Oh, see the way she keeps looking impatiently at her watch? That's definitely not an expression of an anxious lover. When she wants sex, she probably has a fax to her. <laughs> <laughs> You're good at this, aren't you? I've had a lot of practice. Uh, but, you know, don't you think that there's more to people than just what you can see? Not really, no. Well, you try. All right. How about... That woman over there, on the other side of this corner. Okay. Well? Hold well, on a sec. Not as quick at this as you are. All right. All right, yeah, I know. Right, let's see, she's got on new clothes. I bet that she works at the women's department at Macy's. Her clothes aren't fancy enough, and her shoes don't match her dress. All right, uh, Target, then. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's been working there for years, ever since her husband disappeared. Where did he go? He ran off with his business partner. It's probably the best thing that happened to both of them. <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't know it. She never realized it. It's too bad for her. Now she just comes to the museum on her lunch hours to look at her favorite painting. One of the little girls, uh, young dancers holding oranges in the circus. Yeah, I like that one. That woman, she wanted to be a dancer once. She would come here and look at that painting for hours if she didn't have to go back to her job and fit people like the businesswoman that we saw before. You have fast. Thanks. I had a good teacher. Would you like some popcorn? Sure. Sure. I'm glad that we came here. You know, I wasn't really in the mood for French grammar anyway. Just we, you see, two A, you see. I'm here, you are here. New song, we see, we are here. I've always wanted to have a girlfriend that could bring me to the museum. And now you do. For to draw? For always. Or at least till 4 o'clock when I'm supposed to be home from school. Do you think we'll get in trouble for skipping out? Nah. After all, this is a cultural place, and we are here for a culture, aren't we? Yeah, culture. I was so lonely before I met you. I remember all freshmen here I dreamed about having a boyfriend. I dreamed about you too. Really? What did I look like? It's hard for me to say. Please. All right. When I saw you before in my daydream as the teacher droned on, Jesui, Jouez, Moussette, you were sitting on a terrace a uh, spring afternoon somewhere in France. Does that mean I was supposed to be French? Nah, not necessarily. Meeting in French class was close enough. Anyway, like I said, you were sitting there the warmth of the sun in your clothes, a peach tree blossoming behind you, 
a light shining through the translucent petals and onto your face. And I dreamed of you, too. We were staring out a window at a young woman approaching an old stone house. Was it you? Of course. She was walking a gravel path, a white dress, a garden of red roses, a pond reflecting it all. She stopped when she saw you. She smiled. Your eyes ignored the flowers, settled on her hand. She opened the fan and you saw the sunset, a field, the edge of the city. In the distance, smoke stacks, innocent smoke up into the sky. Grass wet from the rain, night falling fast. telescopes. Some people think that it's boring, but it's not. There is constant, endless movement up there. Uh, shooting stars, solar flares, things are always changing. Things really change that much up there? Yes, all the time. Sometimes you can't even be sure that what you're looking at still exists. It takes so long for the light to reach us. And uh, down here, do things change much for you? Oh, they don't for me. And I kind of like it that way. It makes me feel more secure. A little change once in a while can't hurt. I've given up on change. I don't think that that's possible. It is for me. See, most people look back at each phase of their life and say, I was an idiot then, I hope I'm wiser now. But I don't really want to be any wiser or foolish than I am in this very moment. So, you're completely satisfied with who you are right now? I just don't think it would be better if I was someone else. That's all. Sometimes I sure wish I could be someone else. Come to a place like this, you can't help but wonder, what would my life be like with that person? Or with that person there? Or what if I was that person? What would I feel or think? Think? Yes. Do you think we'll ever have time to ourselves again? I mean, real time, not just a few hours off on a Sunday afternoon now and then. Yeah, in about 20 years, when the kids are all done with graduate school. But this is what we both wanted, isn't it? Yes, it is. It was nice of your mother to watch them for a while. She won't be so nice by the time we get back. It'll be growing dark when we get home. The straight line of streetlights glowing the lengths of the block. The shadow of the electrical cable bisecting the lawns. The perfect triangles of the rooftops of the row of brick houses. Every house almost exactly alike. Every driveway with the car pulled up to the front door. The tin weathering on the roof of the fourth house, creaking and turning ever so slightly in the wind. A piece of newspaper caught underneath the car. A porch lamp casting a cone of cold yellow light onto the front steps. The hallway dark and musty. 
the children taking a nap upstairs, and your mother on the couch in the living room, a cup of tea on the table in front of her, the tea bag turning brown in the saucer. We'll cover her with a blanket and head up the stairs. We'll listen at the door for the breath of the children, so quiet and so faint. Sunlight shone from the center stone of the circle stone hedge. Or with the Babylonians looking at the stars from their terrace cigarette towers. Or with the Tartar prince, Ulak Bey, observing the night sky from his observatory at Samarkand. It was the strangest thing, but I had this funny dream the other night. I was working at the observatory, and my mother came up behind me and she asked, Wait a minute. Your mother visits you while you're working? No, no, never. <laughs> That's what's funny about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, she came up behind me, and she asked what I was looking at. So I said, the stars, Mom. The stars? And she said, <clears throat> but they're so far away, Albert. Why don't you look at something closer, something that you can actually touch? That's so what she sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> and so I walked out to a busy street, and I tried to touch people. But I, I couldn't seem to reach it. Why not? Well, every time I tried, it was like my arms just got shorter and shorter until they receded into my sleeves. And so I took a telescope out of my pocket, you know, to try to draw things closer to me. But instead, it was making everything look farther and farther away, as if it was reducing people into little dots and then into electron particles orbiting a nucleus, and then into moons circling a planet, and then I was right back at the observatory looking through the telescope. I guess that's what happens when you try to get too close to things. You feel like you're looking for the wrong end of the telescope. Have you ever felt that way? Not really, no. That's why I decided to start coming here. I wanted to be more around people during the day. Uh, and then I saw you on Monday, and I thought, now that is a person that I should talk to. Flattered, I guess. But I was really afraid to approach you. It took me, it took me a whole week to work up the courage. Am I that intimidating? No, no, not really. It's funny. It's, it's almost like I've known you all my life. All my life, all I ever wanted was to be with you. You didn't have to die, you know. Do you think I wanted to? What am I supposed to do with myself? All I ever do now is sit here and watch the people go by. The young couples holding hands, the families of kids. I told you this would happen, I told you. Yeah, I know you told me. You but... gave me a soul and then you took it away. I was better off without one, really. You didn't have to die. You never really listened to me when I was alive, so I suppose it's not so strange you can't hear me now. I want to say I'm sorry for all the bad things I ever did, all the times I ever made you cry. If you could only hear me. Why did you have to die? I'm so alone.
from Chicago. To reach or be in a place in time to see a person, performance, program, etc. i.e. she was hurrying downstairs to catch the news. To come upon someone unexpectedly. Of a person unexpectedly finding oneself in an unwelcome situation. My sister was caught in a thunderstorm. Informal, being punished or told off. Surprise someone in an incriminating situation or in the act of doing something wrong. Number four, engage a person's interest or imagination. Perceive fleetingly, i.e., she caught a glimpse of herself in the mirror. To hear or understand something said, especially with effort, i.e., he bellowed something Jess couldn't catch. To succeed in evoking or representing, i.e., the program caught something of the flavor of minimum culture. Number five, strike someone on part of the body, i.e., Ben caught him on the chin with an uppercut. To accidentally strike a part of one's body against something, i.e., she fell and caught her head on the corner of the hearth. Number six, contract an illness through infection or contagion. Number seven, become ignited due to contact with flame and start burning, i.e. the rafters have caught. Of an engine, fire and start running. Catch. The net envelops me, all warmth and decadent light, a safety, a lighthouse. Through waves of the darkest hue, I float, encased. I am abroad, but I am home. I used to be hostile towards my captivity like a rebellious child, but I found a sweetness, an embrace, a gentle tugging at my senses. And that's the catch, I propose to myself, the catch of being entangled by you. I float on. Thank you. 
Forgive me my tightrope walking. It's most familiar to me. You say look up, like the world is waiting, like the sky is handing out wishes. But my feet are very narrow, and the rope is narrower still. My eyes must look where I want them to take me. Your space cannot hold me, cannot catch me, cannot mend the broken parts of me when they hit the ground. See, I'm not convinced you've seen the floor inches from your nose, still scary through the mesh pressed into skin. You run with scissors, and you run with dreams, and you go so fast, I don't even know which is more dangerous anymore. You could cut me down in an instant with either one. The weight of the world pulls less on you somehow, like gravity skipped a generation, so heights don't bother you like they do me. I think our held hands make a crow's nest, but when you step out, I find they are a sinking anchor, and while my feet are bracing for impact, you're laughing in the free fall. <laughs> My necklace wasn't broken, it just had enough. There was no need to fix it, I shouldn't have given a thought. It was different and pretty, it had style, you see. But they told me to fix it, they said it was a need. It will grow and will grow, far too big and too bold. I didn't understand why they were being so cold. But one day I grew nervous and I started to mind. It might get too heavy, it might shine too bright. Too many will notice and it might cause a fight. So I decided to fix it. I would untangle the knot. I took out some pliers and sat down on the dot. I struggled at first, hoping it wouldn't tear. I would make it smaller, but not destroy something so rare. I pulled tighter and tighter until the knot became lighter. Now the voices were kinder. Now I wouldn't shine brighter. When it was almost undone, they said one more pull, just for fun. I said I didn't want to. I should have just run. Instead, I aimed harder, one last time for the crowd. But I heard a snap, and then they all looked so proud. It's broken, I screamed. It's broken, you see. There was no need to fix it. It was perfect to me. I didn't mind it entangled. I liked it all my own. Now it's shattered out of my hand. I don't know how to mend it. It's as tiny as sand. How can I fix it, I cried. I fell to my knees. Somebody come help me. I'm begging you, please. But they all just left me alone in the dark. I tried to pick up the pieces scattered all over the park. Why did I fix what was perfect and rare? Why did I worry so much? Who really would care? Entangled was pretty, unique as can be. I should have just left it for people to see. It's not about the language. It's not about the knowledge. It's not about the vocabulary. It's all about your mind. You can't hear the words. You can't hear the new language. You're all in your mind. You hear your mind. The words in your mind are louder. You hear the words that you want to hear. The words your mind is saying. You walk in the streets hour by hour, day after day, looking at people, listening to people. You're trying to hear, trying to hear if any be born. Everything is different. Words are different than your mind. Try to hear. Try to be in the moment. Try to stop your mind from thinking, from reviewing, from remembering the past. Your mind is in the future. Your mind is in the past. You're trying to hear the words of the present. Try to hear the words of the present. Be in the moment.
that I keep trying. I keep perfecting my shape. Maybe one day I'll be a shape for someone's shadow, the way I add the shadow to your shape. Maybe one day there will be just enough light shining, and it will look like we're in perfect tandem, shape-shadow symmetry. Until then, I practice, and practice, and practice, reminding myself that tangibility is the dream, to have a shape of my own. resin like slow moving amber, a butterfly pinned to a board, beautiful, delicate, frozen forever in a facsimile of flight, the click of a tumbler in the lock catching fast, holding you in and everyone else out. The hair pulled back into a perfect body, shellacked flat against the scalp, no wisps escaping. A photograph, a moment caught forever, indelible. But in truth, it has already passed, as each moment follows the next, never to return. Myself, holding to a hug, fastened in place for at least that moment, to share my heartbeat with someone else, as time moves, slow, as Amber. There is this light. It shines high above me, far out of reach. For now, that is. But I promise you, someday I'll catch it. And when I do, I'll make sure no one ever takes it from me. I'll treasure it. I'll keep it in a safe place, and in a way where no one can find it. But I'll share my light. It would be selfish to keep it all to myself. My light will bring happiness to others. They'll admire it so much that they won't want to take it away. But I have to be careful. I can't let my light lose its brightness. I have this plan, you see. A way to make this light my own. I've come to realize I can't reach it all by myself. I'll need others to help me. I'll have to trust them. I'll have to understand that they want to help. They want me to reach this light, and they won't ever try to take it away. It might take a while, but I'll reach that light, and I swear to you, someday I'll be happy. Drop. Synonyms. Capture. Seize. 
Apprehend, arrest, take prisoner, take captive, take into custody, trap, snare, ensnare, net, hook, land, nab, collar, run in, bust. Antonyms, release. Synonyms, become trapped, become entangled, snap. Fix or fasten. Be in time for, make, get, board, get on, set aboard. Antonyms, miss. Synonyms, discover, find, come upon, come across, stumble on, chance on, surprise, catch red-handed, catch in the act. Synonyms, engage, capture, attract. Draw, grab, grip, seize, hold, absorb, and gross. Synonyms. Perceive, notice, observe, discern, detect, note, make out. Antonyms. Miss. Synonyms. Hear, perceive, discern, make out, understand, comprehend, grasp, apprehend. Get, get the drift of, figure out, evoke, conjure up, call to mind, recall, encapsulate, capture, hit, strike, slap, smack, bang. Synonyms, become infected with, contract, get, fall ill with, be taken ill with. Develop, come down with, be struck down with. Antonyms, escape. Synonyms, ignite, start burning, catch fire, 